<laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> so I have to say that it's really feeling electric in this room right now. And I don't know why. <laughs> um, I was just really in prayer earlier before I came in around just just really being shown what this was and why I was even doing this and what it was that was that, that, that this was for me and I could really feel something coming up strong around yeah basically that around that the spirit has been talking to me my whole life and seeing that I grew up actually in a family where, in a way, science was gospel, like math was gospel, um, analytical thought was gospel. And I really believed that, you know, and I became, went into science myself. I did a lot of university and a lot of different sciences, and it was a big thing. Like, I really thought this was my way to, to know something. And that what the, the realization I had in the room just a few minutes ago, and I had all these tears of gratitude for it, was like, oh my gosh, like the spirit's been talking to me through science. And I didn't even know, like not until probably more recently I started to feel something. So I feel like that, that's, that's what's underneath this show, is really wanting to share from that place in my heart that there is this opening happening and this deepening happening in my relationship with, with God, <laughs> spirit, um, I don't know what you want to call it, love. But it's coming through quantum physics. <laughs> so it feels very, very radical, like very radical, like just out of, like way out of the box radical. <laughs> and that's the passion I want to speak from on this show. I want to just stay there in my heart. And if I can just stay there, then I feel like I've, you know, I've done my job, so to speak. So, yeah. Yeah, so, I don't know, I feel like on this, this show we'll be probably just sharing from experiments and just th things that really rock my world, like just like blow my hair back. Um, <laughs> I haven't used that expression in a long time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah, that there's something about, I was talking with Francis earlier about this and just saying, oh, you know, part of this passion is I, I love to read about things that are just mind-blowing. Like, you know, it's like, oh, I got to share that. Like, I just want to share this. Like, this really throws everything up into question that we think is actually happening. Like, I love that. I, feel, I really feel a vibrancy with that. So, so yeah. Um, yeah, and, and for those of you who don't know, I mean, quantum physics is, is a study, really, in science of teeny, eensy, weensy particles. They're so small that they're way smaller than what we can see. and and it's just been science studying it using scientific methods that the world agrees on. You know, it's not weird science. Like, how do I put it? It's like they're using conventional science to study something that is showing up as saying that conventional science is actually wrong, which sounds a little bit weird. And I think at some point we'll probably go into that, <laughs> what, what that even means. But, but yeah, so it's really going down to the, the core, the building blocks of all matter. Everything that we perceive, abs absolutely everything without question that comes through our senses is subject to what can get talked about here because it's at the very core, the very building blocks. So, so I don't know. I think that's just in a nutshell. And, and, and yeah, and I am a, I'm a Course in Miracles student as well, so I have a pathway of, that looks really, really different from quantum physics. <laughs> it's really about it's really about one, will, being willing to be wrong about everything I think and, and uncovering beliefs in my mind to begin questioning them. 
and that's that's kind of the the essence of that so I feel like at some point you know I feel like the spirit has some some something to say here about all of it um, Yeah, and I did feel inspired to invite David Hoffmeister on my first show. Not really knowing how, how it's going to go or what, what, <laughs> what's going to transpire, so I feel like I'm just going to leave it up to, up to that. But... Mm. Yeah, I'm starting to draw a bit of a blank, so it could be time <laughs> to bring David in <laughs> to the conversation. <laughs> and so, yeah, I just, I don't know, David, you and I were talking about this in the room earlier, just some of these ideas and, turn face. Yeah. And, uh, and I was just saying how, how much I wanted to feel the heart in the science, which is such a radical thing. It just doesn't, mm -hmm. the world doesn't make, like, when you hear physicists talk about, there, there's no, like, tears of gratitude, you know, like, it, it just mm -hmm. doesn't, you just don't see it. Mm -hmm. So that's where I want to go on this show. Like, I want to go into the heart of it or something, and I yeah. just wanted to start there, I guess. Yeah, well, I think if we talk about going into the heart of it, to me, there's a great passion with this, deep desire that seems to be deep inside of human beings to know what is what is going on. I want to know what this is all about. I want to know the answers to questions. And um, I think at the very beginning we could say that, um, that, that science comes out of this desire to know, the whole field of science, and that Spirituality, or, and some people call it religion, either term you want to use, is, is comes out of a desire to know mm -hmm. the answers and so forth, and to have uh, direction and possibly some instruction. And then, of course, the third one that comes to mind is philosophy. And mm -hmm. so uh, both of us were in university for a long time, and um, the Really, of, I think those three all come together with the same passion to know what this is all about, what this world's about, who am I, how do I relate to in the whole, in the cosmic sense of things, uh, a desire for meaning, uh, almost like Viktor Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning, that, that basically spirituality, religion, slash religion, philosophy, and science attempt to give us answers. Mm. So there's the same passion that's underneath all three. Mm. And then when I studied uh, philosophy, I mean I studied many different philosophies and the one that kind of boom lit my heart up, that blew my hair back back in the day when I <laughs> had hair. Uh, I remember I was in a philosophy class and I remember they, they, were, they went to this German philosopher named Immanuel Kant and, and his big question, one of his main questions was, how do we know what we know? And I thought, that's a good question. How do we know what we know? Mm. I'd never asked that question. I just wanted to know, but I, how do we know what we know? And then he got a little more deeper with it. Is, it. is it a priori, is it prior to our five senses? Or does it come through our five senses? Can we know what we know through the five senses or prior? And I was like, prior? prior, what's that even mean? And it's like, well, that, that you already know before you're even born, before you even seem to come to this world, you actually have the answers somehow in like a, a soul or some intuitive way or something, that you already know all the answers before you even seem to come here. And I thought, so anyway, he basically said that that's what it is. He, he said, it, you know what you know everything before you even come before there are five senses you know everything and I was like oh my gosh well 
Now, science wouldn't necessarily agree with that. Um, initially, most of what we know is science, and, and even religion and spirituality, you know, we have someone like Jesus is saying, before Abraham was, I am. But maybe that phrase could be knowing it before time, before linear time, there is an, an I amness, something that can be known, and it's, it's everything. But it's not like there's a lot of um, religious leaders that even talk so much about the I am presence. Maybe Jesus, of all the ones, talked the most about it. So it's exciting, the, the experiments that you, that blew your hair back, the, the uh, experiments that were like mind-blowing to me, those were all helpful in my journey of awakening, of coming to peace of mind and, and this ch bursting joy, the kind of joy where you, the tears just roll down your face. It's so explosive, it's so wonderful. And I think that we can start off this leap show by saying that you, you really do have to take that leap of faith, a leap of trust to be shown, to have it revealed to you what what is real and what is true. It's not like uh, you can read it in a book. It has to be an actual direct experience. Mm -hmm. And I know for you that that's what excites you is the, the direct experience, the feeling in the core of your being, in your heart. That's, that's what you live for. And mm -hmm. so we, we share that, you know, mm -hmm. and, and we want to share that with, with everyone here mm -hmm. today. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, what what's coming to mind is just how, like, going back to how how much, yeah, just how much these findings that have, have been, you know, like, it's like things just started to reveal themselves in in this physics. Like, they didn't they didn't know what they were getting into in a way, like. You know, back back, I don't, whenever this started, many many years ago, it's like probably five decades at least. Yeah, you know. yeah. And and that there was yeah, we were just talking about how it was almost like like there was a massive paradigm shift that the world maybe wasn't ready for, but but that the these what they were finding in these experiments were actually pointing to a massive paradigm shift. So. In a way, it's like I think the scientists were not really knowing what to do with it. Like they're kind of like, "Well, yeah. this is interesting." Yeah, like, <laughs> they were blown away as we yeah we are. Yeah, yeah. I think it was Niels Niels Bohr Bohr who was mm -hmm. one of the mm -hmm. one of the founders, who one of the first real quantum physicists. He said, mm -hmm. "If if these findings haven't shocked you, then you don't understand them." Yeah, you know, just that word shock. Yeah. So that's the that's sort of the extent of of just how radical this stuff really was, and I feel like it's kind of like now, like it's almost like there's a readiness or something to begin to even just just to stop blowing past this stuff, to actually stop with it, and just start to let it sink in a little bit, like what this is really saying, yeah. you know, about the nature of reality and. Yeah, because yeah. if if you go if you do not to go into anything too specific, but if you go into some of these experiments, they're showing things like particles just vanishing from existence for no reason, and then popping back into existence. Now that yeah. our day-to-day -day experience, we don't really have. You know, I, mean, I guess maybe once in a while, <laughs> but yeah. it doesn't really happen. No, for me, it doesn't happen. And so it's like, wow, like I wanna, I wanna know more about that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because yeah, that, that rocks my world yeah. when I hear about that. Yeah. And so that's saying something about what the nature of, of reality. Yeah. yeah, I think it's, you know, what really draws us deeper is what maybe we're at first shocked by something or astonished mm -hmm. or startled uh, or surprised. It doesn't matter whether it's uh, science or spirituality or relationships or whatever, there's something that that is, is so amazing that it really gets our attention. Like you grew up, grew up in a, 
a scientific environment. I wouldn't say my family was necessarily scientific. You know, they were church-going family, more of a Christian, traditional Christian family in that sense. And, and then as we go through our childhood and adolescence and into adulthood, we have certain interests. We're drawn in certain directions and, and uh, I was very drawn to science. I felt a lot like a lot of my religious training, I, I kind of took it with a bit of tongue-in-cheek like, mm -hmm. well, I don't actually know if all this stuff in the Bible and all these things I'm being taught in Bible school is true or not. And then when I got, I was a fan of science. I was a mm -hmm. baseball fan, I was a basketball fan, I was a fan of science because I felt it was more systematic. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I, w I could follow the reasoning mm. of the scientist, and I thought, this, this is good, I'm, I'm a fan. So I went into it, um, it probably if, if people had interviewed me in my years in, in undergrad and, and even in grad school, I would say that, yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of science. I like the methodologies, I like the, the rigorous um, looking at things. Not, don't tell me stuff that happened 2,000 years ago or 4,000 years ago. Maybe it did, maybe it didn't. I would put a lot of um, religion, religious uh, and spirituality, I would put it in the mythology camp initially. Mm -hmm. And science, I thought, mm -hmm. oh, I, I'm, you've got my ear. But then when I went deeper into science, and I think probably I was right around grad school when I started to uh, open up to to quantum and to this new science that was coming, I was astonished mm -hmm. that that what the quantum physicists were talking about felt very intuitive, and I was like, oh my God, these dis they're discoverers of something that's very important, and basically I could see it was overthrowing the the scientific method, which was all based on empiricism which was all based on the philosophy that you know what you know through the five senses and you experiment on the world, like Isaac Newton had done, and you draw your conclusions from your evidence. Mm -hmm. I was a fan of that. Then the quantum physicists came and when they started doing experiments that showed that the world wasn't out there, it wasn't apart from consciousness, I was just getting interested in consciousness and they were all their experiments were showing that there's no world apart from the perceiver that you can't get the experimenter out of the experiment. Mm. I was like, whoa, mm. what? Mm. <laughs> I'm a fan of science but if you're showing me with mm. experiments that you can't get the experimenter out of the experiment all that rigorous, double-blind experiments, everything was to make it, you know, so authentic and so tight that, that mm -hmm. there was no human error that would enter into the scientific method. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly the mind of the experimenter, the mind of the scientist was influencing mm -hmm. the results of the scientific method. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was like, that's just taking all objectivity, which I loved, mm. I was a big fan of objectivity, not opinion, objectivity, and suddenly it was saying everything that we've done with all these experiments is, and all this data that we've been collecting for generations is all subjective. And I thought, subjective? Based on, based on the beliefs, the whims, the preferences mm -hmm. that a particle would show up in a, one of these tiny little particles you mentioned, it would show up where the experimenter, the science, scientist's mind, expected it to show up. Mm -hmm. That it wasn't predictable except <laughs> that it showed up where the scientist wanted it to show up, mm -hmm. where the scientist believed it would show up. And you know, the, the, this different experiments that you and I were subjected to were all showing this, that the observer the observer effect was huge. To me, that was what quantum was all about. And then the more I got into it, they described a quantum field which sounded very much like Rumi's, the great poet mm -hmm. Rumi's, there's a field, I'll meet you there. Meet, that's what everything met in the quantum mm -hmm. field. Everything was completely connected. And I started to think, wow, that is unification. 
That's what forgiveness is about. Mm -hmm. That's what joy is about. That's what happiness is about. Everything is connected and beyond connected everything is one. I was like, mm -hmm. finally, there, there's a science that's taking the mind to self-realization, to self-actualization, that Maslow called it, towards know thyself, that the Greeks I thought, oh my God, it's all going to the same place. Mm -hmm. There's nothing out of accord here. There's mm -hmm. nothing missing. It's all here. It's pointing to the same place. I was like, hallelujah, you know, that was my, my feeling. And then to live that, to me, became more than, than all the theories that kind of point to it. It's just like, wow, I would like to live in the quantum field. You know, that was my next thing. <laughs> Because I would think that the quantum field was closer to knowing that a priori thing that, that Kant had talked about. That, that, that's what Kant was talking about prior to the distortions, the judgments, the opinions, mm -hmm. the fragmentation. Prior mm -hmm. to all that is knowing. Mm -hmm. And then I was reading that in the Course too. Mm -hmm. Knowledge. Mm -hmm. Knowing. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's, this is everything. This is not some... Mexico. Let's see if it. A word from our sponsor. Yeah, because I was last night. I was in. I was also in prayer around this, and just again, just feeling a little like baffled by it. Almost like I don't know where to go. I don't know what to talk. About, you know, I don't know. And then I, I opened my Facebook, and then something popped up on my screen, which just kind of really caught my attention. It was a line which I think is from, I think it's actually from the Gospel of Thomas, and it says, be passers-by. And I think that was just, I think you called it the shortest teaching of Jesus that he mm -hmm. ever had. Maybe, mm -hmm. Well, I think he had judge not to. Judge not, yeah. Those... I th maybe they're the same. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and so, and I was like, oh, okay, so is there something here about this? Like, you're talking about just, you know, that there's this pathway into an experience of the unified field where, where all is one. Yeah. And that at some stage, the observer effect is where you start to see that, oh my gosh, like th this, is, this is my mind, actually. This, yeah. Maybe this isn't actually happening out there, so to speak. Maybe this is yeah. actually just, just thoughts, just beliefs, you know, whatever you want to call it. And, and my pathway to that oneness might this might give a clue, actually, as to yeah. how to get there. Yeah, so. I think in scientific terms, you know, all of science taught us that to look at cause and effect, and that the cause came first and the effect came second. Hmm. And even in typical physics, for every action there's a reaction, and you know, there's, it's very much about linear time and understanding linear time. Whereas I feel quantum physics is the doorway, the portal, the gateway into the experience that cause and effect are together. They are not separate. Mm -hmm. And so that brings everything back to what if time itself is not linear, if it's simultaneous? And what if there is no difference between the observer and the observed? You know, that that is not a question that would even come up in Newtonian, you know. Mm. The observer is, is ob observing experiments and drawing conclusions based on this linear cause-effect uh, world and cosmos and all the relationships are, are, have cause-effect in a linear way. Mm. So I would say that what spirituality, if you go all the way with whatever spirituality you're using and it's authentic, it will show you that that cause and effect are together, that there is no difference between perceiver and perceived, there is no difference between observer and observed, everything is completely unified and there is nothing apart from anything else. Fragmentation was the illusion and the mm -hmm. reality of what you actually can know is unity, is unification. Mm -hmm. It's very practical and the other thing about it is, is that you don't once you start to see that there's no difference between the perceiver and the perceived, or that you can't get the perceiver out of the perceived world, that it's all always the same, all your questions vanish. Every question vanishes. Mm -hmm. It's just a state of, 
of unification and, and happiness and peace and joy. And there's not a single question that remains. Mm. And this is also what Jesus talks about, how that consciousness is unified as well. It, it seems through the ego like it's fragmented and there's different levels and it seems like there are different people and with private minds and private thoughts and there's seven billion different perspectives going on through the eyes and ears and the, the little human perceivers. Mm -hmm. That's not real either. It's really just one experience. And then you start to break down, all, it starts to mess with psychology too, because psychology would say there's a world, there's a perceptual world, but then you can choose how you want to interpret that actual world. As, as if there's like a solid, actual physical world, and you have something in your mind that can interpret that. Mm. And what we're learning from quantum physics, the Course in Miracles, all mystical experiences show you that's not the case. That there's not something that interprets the physical world, that the physical world that's perceived is actually an interpretation. Mm. It is the interpretation. There isn't an, an interpretive mechanism. Mm. And you're never upset by anything in form, you're upset by the whole interpretation. So as long as your interpretation is egoic and fragmented, you, you will have upsets. They will come and come and come again. And once you realize that you don't have the power to break it up, that it can't be broken up, that it's not really like fragmented at all, then that is the end of all your problems. Really. And so that's huge. <laughs> you know, to the, most people say, well, you have no problems. Well, that would be nice. That's wishful thinking. But actually, if you go all the way in quantum physics and you're very intuitive and you follow it all very deeply, it, it will first shock you and then it will dissolve the you that, that seems to be perceiving. Mm. And it's, it's gone. Everything's gone. But it's joyful. <laughs> It's great. It's like the rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> this is cool because I actually had some questions written down. I think you answered them all. <laughs> so, and I realized I didn't bring them with me. So. Right when they give us the, yeah. how our, our minutes are counting down. Okay, let's answer it all right here. On the, first, <laughs> exactly. the first episode, let's do it. Uh, I see our MCs are over there ready to move into action. Yeah. Okay, well, <laughs> I think, I don't know. I, I, it just all feels really, yeah, really beautiful to me. I just wanted to thank everyone for, for tuning in. <laughs> I see all these happy faces up there. and I don't know, it just feels like a journey. Everyone's on the same journey together to, to really look at these deep questions together. So I, I just fully <coughs> join, join you in that. And just really grateful for David to be on my show uh, and thank you for having <laughs> join me. me in, 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 <laughs> this first first show, you know, <laughs> premiere, <laughs> someone called it. So I'm just, I'm just really, really grateful for all of it. So thank you. <laughs> See you next time. <laughs>